little bit noisy. Everyone's having their coffee. I don't know whether there's a lot of noise on inflation or how your view, Ken, has changed on the U.S. economy in the past months. Well, it's pretty much stayed the same. I think we're we're still fighting inflation. It, it's interesting to me because everybody's focused on the Federal Reserve. I was just right. talking to somebody about the last time we had inflation, there was a big debate called guns and butter. I don't know how many people remember that, but the United States was in the Vietnam War, and, the, and, and there was really a lot of choices to be made and, and how inflationary a war environment is. And I do think people are underestimating how inflationary it is to conduct policy at home and, yeah. and, and fund the war. And I do think that inflation is going to stay higher for longer. Mm -hmm. And the Fed's, I don't think the Fed's easing so quick. So no, no cuts from the Fed is what you're expecting? Are you? I expect the Fed might be continue to be aggressive and at least higher for longer. Are you expecting some kind of credit crunch? Look, I think credit's tough out there. Um, cost of money's gone up. It's hard to get credit. I think it's going to continue to be hard for a while. Yes, I don't know if it'll be a credit crunch, but it's difficult. Ken, Ken what do you worry most about in the markets right now? I think the um, probably just the continuation. I, I, I do think we need to find a. I think the continuation of the war is something in the background. It's just not front and center in the conversation. And what I was trying to point out is, it was interesting in the 70s when we had inflation. It was it was the topic. The interesting part to me is that no one's even discussing it as a fundamental driver of fiscal policy that results in inflation. And I think. I think it's one of those things that needs to be, you know, it, it, it's going to continue to drive drive inflation. How much should we worry about the debt ceiling? Not, not as much as everybody here wants to. Okay. I think it's a great news item, and I think it's like watching any great negotiation. Again, maybe my background is an M&A banker. Look, no deal gets done until everybody walks away from the table at least once. And so we're doing that in a global environment with a lot of media. But I, I do think sooner or later the debt ceiling will be yesterday's news. Ken, when you look at some of the big pictures, it can be AI. Are, are your bankers using ChatGPT? How will that change the way that you invest? Right now we're actually blocking ChatGPT just because you have to be careful about as you put information into the system, it actually becomes right. part of the system. So there's a lot that has to happen for us to get uh, use out of it. But obviously ChatGPT and all AI is going to to change a lot of things. A, a lot of things or everything? Is it too soon to say how much it will change and at what pace? Yeah, no, I think it'll be, like all things in tech, I look back and I've been shocked every time at the at the curve um, and how quickly things get adopted and how much change happens. Yeah. I suspect there'll be a significant amount of change from AI. Um, Ken, talk to me a little bit about SVB. So you, you've put in people, right, in, in your company from SVB. Are you expecting to do the same with Credit Suisse? I thought you were asking me about SUVs for a second. SUV, no, <laughs> SVBs. SVBs. <laughs> it's so noisy. <laughs> Look, we, you know, it's it's a wonderful, just when things are difficult are the time when you have to make big moves in life. Yeah. And, and they, it's funny, the great opportunities don't come when you want them to. They come because something happens. So when SVB uh, had their issue, we moved that weekend, and we saw their tech team as a spectacular opportunity for us, and we hired about 12 managing directors out of the group. Now, the M&A environment isn't perfect, but I don't think that would have become available in a perfect environment. So we're building for the next five, ten years. But so is that a space that you will grow, basically, what oh, yeah. SVB was doing? How big will it get? Well, it doubled the size of our tech footprint. Mm -hmm. uh, it fit like a glove, really. There was almost no overlap. It was, uh, we knew the people, we had, we had literally tried to hire them before SVB did, okay. and so we knew them, we knew they were our culture, we knew the overlap was perfect for us. Look, the tech fee pool is the biggest fee pool in the world right now, even for private equity. I think software alone might be the biggest fee pool, and uh, out of those 12 MDs, I think seven of them were uh, on software, so we look forward to really, uh, you know, it, it doubles our footprint in the tech world. Are, are you looking to hire anyone from Curtis Suisse? Does it present, the, you know, similar opportunities? It's a, it's a big talent pool. It's different, though. Uh, we did hire, we did hire, announce one hire uh, in the industrial business from CS, and, and we are looking at that more as a, a one-off opportunity as people decide. But SVB was, for us, very unique yeah. in how deep they were 
how organized they were. It's a, it was a team that understood each other, worked together for many years, so it was a really good opportunity to do something significant. And can more than the crypto meltdowns? Because that also, I imagine, you know, bring hiring opportunities from some of the juniors. Crypto, we've been big, you know, we've been doing our restructuring group. We have one of the leading restructuring groups in the world, and we've been involved in almost all the crypto restructuring. But I don't know how much more there really is to go on that. I, um, I you know, I think there was a big wave post FTX. Yeah. Um, you know, we have a group. We are dedicated to blockchain, and we cover it. But this, this tech team we took out of SVB was much more towards yeah. software um, and, and, you know, direct tech. Um, given everything that we've talked about here at the conference and we've just talked about, how do you think your firm will change in the next two years? What will you focus on? What part of the business do you think will grow significantly? Well, you know, I believe this is, this is a big spring almost waiting to uncoil. The, the M&A market's been in a recession. Everybody asks me, is, uh, is the economy going to go into a recession? I'll tell you, the M&A market's been in recession for about 14 or 15 months. Yeah. And the inventory of the transactions doesn't go bad. It doesn't spoil. It's not like, uh, you know, it doesn't go away. And I think when the Fed stops, when we have some clarity, and I don't know if that'll be a month, a quarter, six months, but when it comes back, the M&A market will come back yeah. strong. Um, and we're just preparing for yeah. that. We think we're unlevered. Yeah. And we have a great opportunity to build the company in this downturn. Ken, there's a lot of money in this region. And I know that there were you know, reports that you were involved with a possible takeover standard charger of, of a Middle Eastern investor. Do you think that there will be more opportunities like that, Middle Eastern investors looking for you know, large, systemically important banks? Well, I won't comment on any specific deal, but I will say, when you come here, and I encourage everybody who hasn't been, it's optimistic, it's energetic, it's pro-business. And the enthusiasm and optimism and desire to grow the region is 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 really invigorating. Um, and yes, I believe the region has a bright future and is almost on the opposite cycle yeah. of the West right now. They're they're yeah. they're looking forward. It, 